So uh, it's interesting because uh, President Obama took this opportunity to say to Silicon Valley, do not be such purists. You need to compromise on encryption. He said smartphones shouldn't be treated uh, as some special little snowflake here. Uh, we're going to have to work, Apple's going to have to work with the government and break encryption. And I couldn't disagree with him more. What was the reaction of that audience at South By? Uh, to well, I think, yeah, no, no. So I think it's important to remember that the, the first thing the president came and talked about was uh, the challenge that he wanted to put to Silicon Valley and to entrepreneurs and innovators to help improve uh, the functioning of government right. and, and right put in on place on systems yeah. for efficiency. And so when he was asked the question at the end about uh, privacy versus encryption, I think the spirit of his answer was uh, help us figure this out, right? Clearly right now the government has a position, uh, Silicon Valley has a position, those positions are pretty far apart, uh, but it doesn't have to be that way. And so I think by the time the question was answered, most people in the audience were on his side. You know, they were they yeah. well not on his side, but they were they were willing to take on the challenge to sit right. across the table and negotiate some right. sort of better outcome. Uh, I think the coverage afterwards and and you know your response uh, you know is is in that vein to some extent is you know let's remember the beginning of the conversation as well, which is there are still very very different and strong opinions as to how this stuff should. Unfold. So the the question is whether or not the president was able to melt the, uh, you know, melt the the divide, and and that more people will start to sit around the table and try to figure right. out whatever the way it should be. Um, well, because obviously we can't continue with both sides just playing in their own sandbox. Yeah, uh, not going to get so anywhere. So I'm really glad. And of course, President Obama, very instrumental in Code for America, uh, did a lot to create a, a kind of a tech elite, or maybe not at least not the right word, a tech core more like the Peace Corps, uh, of people who are uh, really doing a lot to make government more responsive, more transparent. And yeah, he has. He's 100% for that. for that. 100 for that. 100% for that. But I got to tell you, uh, he's misguided on the encryption thing. It's not that we're fetishizing the phones. It's that the math, math doesn't uh, bend to politics. It's just math. And it would be like going to, and encryption is math, it'd be like going to, a, a mathematics conference and said, guys, we've got to, you've got to be flexible in this two plus two equals four thing. There are other points of view. We have to compromise. It's not a question of that. Encryption exists too late. He says, don't fetishize your phone. That's not the issue. It's not about phones. It's about the government saying encryption is bad for law enforcement. Well, they may say that. That may even be true. Nobody's denying that. It's too late. Encryption exists. And if you take it, if you we have history of the government saying, oh, we can't let encryption get into the hands of the bad guys. Back in 1996, they said, oh, you can't export strong encryption. We're going to treat it like munitions blocking the export of strong encryption. How did that work out for us? Well, I can tell you Netscape, as a result, made a version of Netscape. They're not going to make one for the U.S. and one for the rest of the world with 40-bit encryption, crap encryption that's easily broken. And here we are 20 years later suffering the security consequences of crap encryption. Many websites still support 40-bit encryption and hackers are able to use that to attack you. And it's, it's history, it's a fact. So uh, I'm, look, I'm a, I think he's absolutely right to, to enlist the support of coders, but it is a complete misunderstanding of what encryption is for him to say, oh, let's not fetishize encryption. Let's, let's talk, let's sit down at the table. It's two plus two equals four. It's done. Well, I think he's going well, with a 2.5, 2.5 <laughs> well, but, so, but I would Pi is say, not three. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I would also say that. that go ahead, Brian. I, I think the, and I'm not, I'm not picking sides. I actually am, am I, I sit literally in the middle of this type of conversation. I think what he's actually saying, though, is it, it's not just a conversation about encryption, right? So there are, there are clearly a, a whole range of aspects here. Part of it is the actual, uh, you know, code and security. Part of it is the evolution of the laws. Part of it is no, the, I understand that. the shifts in the behavior. I understand and, that. And you can and make Congress not can any of those other conversations. No, though, right? no, we're not because there's no Congress. conversation. Congress can make a law making these, you know, uh, open to law enforcement and they probably will. And right, it will have the same that. effect as making the law 
saying that uh, strong encryption was munitions and should not be exported. It, the effect will be, and we know because we have history, the, uh, I don't know, I, I, very I negative. What I'm, yeah. what I'm saying is, I think one of the things he acknowledged in the conversation yesterday is that you know, making of bad laws, if Congress will even pass any laws at the moment, isn't <laughs> isn't the entirety of the solution, nor is it the methodology that the government would like to take. The question is, are there other aspects of things having to do with the balance between security and privacy and the, you know, the best interests of fighting, you know, violent extremism or online harassment yeah, no, I, yeah. and, and all that, yeah. that, that nobody in the government is, you know, sufficiently qualified to be thinking about on their own. And largely... Uh, very few people from Silicon Valley, from the marketing community, from all the different, you know, families represented at South by, they're not in the conversation at all. And, you know, so we're, we're well, not, not why. only are we not solving it, we're not getting any closer. This is the first time anyone from, Thank I mean, you. this president thanks has reached out. out here. Yes, thanks for yeah, reaching that's out. Exactly. I agree. Uh, you know, but he's going to get, he's going to, I think what he's going to hear is there's a mismatch between politics, which is the art of compromise, and as it should be, the art of negotiation, that's what it is, and math. And encryption, unfortunately or fortunately, exists, and it's too late to outlaw it, and any attempt to outlaw it is misguided. And oh, no, I think it, that he'll hear that from else, these technologists. You know, what else would Silicon Valley offer? I mean, that's, I don't even know the answer to that, right? So let's say that the math is the math, and I'm not disagreeing, I agree with you. The math is the math. There are other things that the people who, you know, build the Facebooks and the Googles and the, you know, Airbnbs and whatnots of the world know about how to nudge human behavior, know how to, you know, maybe take someone who's headed down the wrong path towards a dangerous set of actions and move them back in the right direction. Absolutely. Facebook's so doing some really a, interesting things along that line. Exactly. They? But yeah. they're not, they're not, they're, you know, everything is going into that same bucket. No one is sharing that or helping the government figure that out. And so the government who's there trying you know to protect our safety and our values and our rights you know is is ill-equipped to do it you know wouldn't it be great if you know those who actually have figured out how to manipulate human behavior to you know take less meaningful actions also right. applied it to some of these things that we know have have more significant consequences no, well, i think that's great that the government has actually done that and that's one of the things that President Obama has done and reached out with 18F to create the organization and community where they did come. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. No, what is that? They came out and they invited thought leaders mm -hmm. from all over Silicon Valley to come into what is what they would call a closed think tank. So they mm -hmm. wanted to enlist thought leaders from Airbnb, Facebook, every top tech company to right. lend top tech re resources to help them streamline all of their websites and really upgrade their technology. So I think that he did reach out to the tech community, but you know, if they didn't call you, they didn't call you. But if they, <laughs> right. no, they, but he, they reached out to you with 18F, right which is on. A great. Yeah, which is right great. On, because I think and geeks tend to I, be. I was part of that, and it was it was a great. Were you? I How was. <laughs> no, so, I think geeks tend to be dismissive of government and say I'm not going to play at all, and they're they tend to be libertarian but open. and. and and so it's a, it's we got to we're all part of society. We have to participate in society. Exactly. That, that is exactly. absolutely a good movement. How fun that was that for you? It was amazing. Salesforce had the opportunity to host it, so it was um, it was fantastic. They brought everyone from different sectors to show exactly how technology in Silicon right. Valley is changing the face of tech. Of the websites that you can go to across the board. Let's just say you're applying for immigration or your green card or social security and student so, loan student loans Good all example. these websites yeah. were built 20 years ago costing hundreds and you know thousand dollars millions of dollars and silicon valley pretty much solved it in a weekend 